Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura and I'm your host today. Uh, condo Insider is a, is a, a show about uh, condo living and for, it's for people who live and work and, and uh, have uh, relations with condo associations. And uh, today we're gonna continue our discussion about city legislation. And before I get to the topic, uh, which is an update to Bill 13 that we spoke about maybe two weeks ago, I want to update you on uh, some good news uh, relating to the life safety evaluation. That's the fire safety um, uh, bill ordinance that the, the city passed in connection with the Marco Polo, well, in response to the Marco Polo fire in July of uh, 2017. And um, that's the bill that uh, requires uh, mandatory uh, fire sprinklers to be installed in the buildings, in all high rises, unless your building is less than 10 stories and, or it has exterior, open exterior corridors. Uh, if, if you have those, if you are in either of those types of buildings, then you're exempt from the mandatory uh, provision, but you still have to do something called a life safety evaluation. And uh, I heard uh, a few days ago, and I'm not at liberty to, to uh, disclose the building, but there's a, th several buildings have gone through the life safety evaluation, but this is a, a, a large building and it's a downtown building. And we understand that the life safety evaluation uh, costs about $5,000 and they got a passing score the first time. So it's not uh, impossible. It's happened, and I understand that the uh, site man, the general manager of the building, is willing to be a resource person for people who, you know, haven't done the life safety evaluation and want to do it. And so, in, in if, if right now I've got to call into him, and if he tells me it's okay for me to disclose his name and contact information, we will be doing that on the Hawaii Council website and in our next. Condo Insider Show, we will uh, be broadcasting that information so that you can talk to a live uh, person who has actually gotten a passing score on the life safety evaluation uh, on the fire safety uh, uh, ordinance uh, that was passed uh, over a year ago. And so that's good news. It means that it's doable. It's not expensive. It just means that you need to make up your mind uh, to go on the website, get familiar with the matrix, and just find a vendor and do it. And it's, and, and uh, so hopefully we will have a lot of success stories. I know that over 30 buildings in the city and county of Honolulu have already done the life safety evaluation. This is the first I have heard that of somebody, a building getting a passing score on the first time. And so, you know, that's, that's gotta be a milestone. And we will be sharing that information uh, to our viewers so that uh, you will have a resource person to talk to. Okay, uh, but th the topic of today, the topic is an update on, on Bill 13. And Bill 13 is the rubbish pickup bill. And where we left it is the city was going to start, um, uh, the city was going to start charging. And that portion of the bill uh, is dead. And there's going to be another hearing in a few weeks because they have to make a decision in early June uh, and to finalize the budget. But I think that the mayor's proposal requiring uh, residents to pay for a garbage pickup uh, is not going to pass out. And for those of us who live in condominiums, uh, most of us have private. Uh, uh, rubbish removal companies who remove our, uh, our, you know, our rubbish. So we would not be affected, but where we would be affected is bulky item pickups. And, uh, and Bill 13, uh, and uh, there's a pilot project that starts Monday, uh, is about bulky item pickups. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And let's first talk about uh, the pilot project. The pilot project for bulky item pickups, okay? That's gonna start Monday, June 3rd. 
And I, there's going to be a website that's going to be uh, flashing across your screen, opala.org. Okay, that's where you go to make your appointments. The whole, the, the Bucky Island pickups under the, and the pilot project starts June 3rd. It only affects single family residences and, and um, multifamily buildings from, uh, from uh, Foster Village in uh, IAEA to Hawaii Kai. Okay, for the rest of you people on Oahu, the bulky item pickup, the old system is still in effect, which means that if you're, there's, you know, what everybody's assigned a day in the month. And so that means if your day for pickup is uh, last Wednesday of the month, that's still your pickup day if you're not in the pilot project area. Again, the pilot project area is from Foster Village in IAEA to uh, Hawaii Kai. Uh, and so if you're in that area, then you will be part of the pilot project that I'm gonna be talking about now. The pilot project says that for bulky item pickups, the city will only pick up if you call in and make an appointment, okay? And you can call in to a number at the Environmental uh, Services uh, Department, that's uh, the city and county of Honolulu, and they're the ones who, you know, uh, administer the rubbish removal for uh, residents in the city and county of Honolulu. And they are the ones who also uh, uh, administer the bulky item pickups. And they have a website, which is opala.org, or you can call the Environmental Services Department. And I understand that the person who answers the phone uh, to take your uh, information uh, is very helpful. The two people that I've spoken to who did not use the website but did the call in says that the person was very, very helpful. And so uh, I guess, uh, you know, that's, that's a relief. But what you do is you call in and you ask for an appointment. And, and, uh, and I'm not going to be talking about single family residences. I'm going to be talking about multifamily residences. And these are condominiums, uh, apartment buildings, uh, co cooperative housing, and these include uh, townhouse projects, okay? And so what you do is you have to call in and, uh, or go on opala.org and make an appointment. And under the, um, and right now the, the website, for if you're in a multifamily residence, which means it's a condo, a, a co-op, an apartment building, or a townhouse project, it says that your resident manager or property manager has to make those phone calls. The website is wrong, okay? There was a city council hearing two weeks ago, and uh, they changed that. And uh, so, so even though you go online uh, to the website at opala.org, and you, uh, you know, you, the instructions will say that your resident manager or property manager has to make the appointment. Uh, that's, that's wrong. And what I'm being told is that, let's say you live in ABC condominium. And so you go on the website for June and you can type in ABC condominium. If somebody from your building has already called in to make an appointment, then you have to use that same day because they're only going to allow uh, one pickup day per association. So whether calls in first, uh, they're going. You know, they're they're going to have an appointment. And if you open up the website and you type in the association name, and if it's ABC Condominium, then you're going to see the appointment there. If you type in the name and there's nothing shows up then you can pick any day in the month and uh, make an appointment. And I'm, uh, and I'm told that when you type in and, and you, you pick a day and you have to tell them what your, 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 um, uh, you want picked up. And so if it's a couch, I'm told that you, know, you have to describe it. So if it's a couch, uh, and, and I, I think they give you prompts and they'll ask you what color, uh, is it, 
you know, fabric? Is it leather? Uh, is it me? Is it got wood? If you're putting in an appliance, is it a um, uh, uh, whatever the maker model is, whether it's uh, Westinghouse or GE, and it's a washer, it's white, uh, and and you know, so you have to put you have to put in the descriptions, mainly because uh, we're told we we were told at the you know his, uh, uh, the hearing on this bill that whatever you put down, if you, whatever you describe is what's going to get picked up. And so the example we were given was, if you call in and you say, I have one couch and one chair. And when the city people get there, and if they find three couches and two chairs, they're only going to take one couch and one chair because that was what was called in. They're going to leave whatever is left there. And so the, the question is, well, how do you know that you're picking up the right stuff because if I'm the person who called in, and let's say I have this old brown uh, couch, it's got cotton fabric, and, um, and I have a wooden chair, and I put that out there, and, and you take the wrong couch and the wrong chair, I'd be really, I'd be kind of upset. I really would be upset that you, because my stuff then is still left on the sidewalk, and I have to figure out what to do with it. Um, but anyway, um, and, you know, I've talked to s s s several people, and, 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 and uh, one person who went on the website says, says that, um, you know, when you make, when you type in your uh, description, so if you type in one brown couch and one uh, aluminum table with four chairs, and then let's say you do a, um, a refrigerator, a GE refrigerator, uh, stainless steel, and you, you, you have those items, okay, that you can then print out a receipt and you can take your receipt and tape it to your three items and that's what the city will pick up. And there were, there were other people too who said that, you know, they, they thought of that and they were thinking of maybe doing, you know, colored labels and putting the colored labels on their items so that the city would know that that was what was called in. But as all, we all know, when you put stuff on the street for bulky item pickups, people see the, the items on, on your sidewalk and they're gonna, that, that pile that starts off with maybe three items will grow and grow and grow and pretty soon you've got stuff on the sidewalk. And, and if you have labels, then the labels may you know, can be removed from one and maybe put onto another. And it's like, how, how, can you, how, how can you tell that the city is going to be able to take the right stuff? And that's one issue that the city tells us that they will have to figure out. But anyway, uh, you know, that's the process that uh, is going to be implemented in the pilot project. And if it works, it will be implemented uh, statewide. And I'm going to, um, we're going to take a break right now and I'm going to come back and we'll follow up on, on what happens, you know, what happens, you know, what happens if you put stuff out on the a sidewalk and they take, they take the wrong stuff away. What can you do? Okay, and we'll answer that when we, after the break. Hey, aloha, my name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests, I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha.
Okay, we're back. We're back for the uh, second uh, part of our program. And we're talking about Bill 13, about uh, a bulky item pickups and the pilot project that's going to start on Monday. And I'm sure, uh, and, and I, we were told that the pilot project is a learning process and it will, it, it's going to last six months or more. Um, and it's basically, uh, it, the, the, the reason, and we asked, we asked uh, the question, well, why are you doing this? And apparently, uh, the city feels that it's more efficient, it's a more efficient use of their manpower uh, and their resources to have an appointment and, and you would put it on the sidewalk the night before and it would be picked up by six o'clock the next morning or at least by eight o'clock. So it's not on the sidewalk more than 12 hours. Because right now, the way the system works, you have one day a month. And like I said, if it's the last Wednesday of the month is your pickup date, you put stuff out on the sidewalk on, if it's a Wednesday, if it's the last Wednesday of the month, then you would put your stuff on the sidewalk on Tuesday, late Tuesday afternoon. And then the city has four days to pick it up. And so, I mean, that takes into account uh, maybe they were busy from the day before and they haven't finished the day before pickups, or maybe there was the, 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 they had um, workers who were sick or absent, and uh, so they're falling behind. But anyway, uh, the city, uh, the, 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 the uh, pro process was that they had four days to pick up the stuff. And we all know what happens. If, they, if people, if the city didn't pick it up on the first day, it grows and it grows and it grows. And so by the time, if, you know, and, and luckily in, the, in my condo, uh, they've been pretty good about picking it up. And maybe there were a few months where the, the bulky items sat out there for maybe more than a day. But, you know, we, we were, you know, we, we've had pretty good luck about them picking it up within two to three days. But anyway, they, the city feels that this is a, a much more efficient system, and it's patterned off of a system that was implemented in San Francisco. And so, so it's not like, you know, Honolulu is you know, creating this system. They are borrowing it. Uh, from uh, San Francisco, and San Francisco has a call in, and you, and then within ten hours, it gets picked up. And so um, you're asking, well, what happens? I mean, what? Ha why won't they pick up the stuff? Like I, like I said, the, the city said that if you have one couch, you call in one couch and one chair, and there's three couches and two chairs, they're only going to take one couch and one chair, and they're going to leave that other stuff. So what do you do with that? Well, if it's not your stuff, uh, the, the, the Department of Environmental Services says that they have investigators who are supposed, you can call it in and they will come and you can make a complaint that other people have come and put uh, items uh, on the bulky item pickup spot and they will uh, handle the investigation. Other than that, what they want you to, you know, what you can do is you can take the, those bulky items and put them in a storage area. The problem is, is that most buildings, most high rises that were built back in the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s don't have storage spaces to store these things. And if it's a townhouse project, you have zero storage space, okay? You have no place to store these things. And, and another thing is that if you have to store them, that means the association staff, and it's really not their job. It's not their job to move bulky item pickup for residents in the building. And uh, this uh, creates uh, some concern for association, a liability concern, because if they get hurt, if they hurt themselves moving these items from the curb to a storage space that you may or may not have, uh, they could get hurt. And if they get hurt, it becomes a workman's, workers' comp issue that the association uh, needs to uh, uh, resolve. And we all know that you know, those things are, you know, they, they, it takes a long time to get rid of those complaints. And you know, for, 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 for the worker, it may mean you know, many weeks or months 
in uh, healthcare rehabilitation, which is something that none of us want to get into. So we would prefer that association staff not be used to move stuff back and forth. And so, uh, you know, what I suggest you do is you follow the environmental services uh, suggestion and call the inspectors and say, hey, somebody left stuff on the sidewalk. We don't know who did it, and it's not our stuff. So can you come and investigate it? Other otherwise, you know, under the ordinance, what they can do is they, they can give you a fine. Now, under this uh, pilot project, there's, there is one issue that is of a concern. Um, with bulky, uh, the bulky item pickups, with condominiums, with the multifamily dwellings, you have a limit of 20 items. And that's not 20 items per unit. That's 20 items per association. And, you know, we've already told the city, you know, if you've got a 600-unit building and you're limited to 20 items, I mean, that's kind of, um, you know, unrealistic. I mean, if you have, you know, because 10% of a 600-unit building is 60 units. And, and, and so, you know, you've got more than 20 items right there. And so... Uh, this, and the city doesn't have a response to that, but right now that's what they're saying. That, and when you go on the website and you log in your items, the, uh, the program that's on the website will you know, keep a tally. So if you log in your chair, um, your refrigerator, and the aluminum table, and your neighbor goes on next and logs in a TV, and then, you know, it, that you would want to put the whether it's a, it's a console or whether it's just a portable if and what size is the screen and what is the make and model and then um, let's say the neighbor has a television a telescope and a mattress okay that's six items and so the next person who comes on and you can see by the time you get to twenty and if you're the maybe the tenth resident uh, who wants to uh, have a bulky item pickup, and you go onto the website, and now there's like 19 items, and you have three items that you want to uh, put. You want to put a desk, a chair, and a sofa. And because there's 19 items, you're only going to be allowed to log in one item. And so you know, so and, and then and then if you're um, if you're the next person, you won't be able to log in at all because the, the 20 items has been met and the uh, program is going to tell you that, you know, the quota has been filled, so to speak. And that means you're going to have to wait until the next month uh, to be able to put your bulky items out. And so, so that's a problem because, you know, somebody asked me, well, what if our association has four towers? And, you know, that's a lot of you know, units. But, you know, if you've got four towers and, you know, five or 600 units, you're only allowed 20 items for pickup. And, you know, that's something uh, that, you know, this, the city is going to have to work on. And, and like we said, you know, th this, is a, this is a work in progress. And if you go onto the website now, uh, it will tell you. And, and I'm repeating myself because uh, for those who are just joining us, if you go onto the website now and you live in a, a multifamily uh, unit, it's going to say that your property manager or resident manager needs to call in uh, the appointment for the bulky item pickup. And that's not true. The city is going to allow, and no, the city is going to uh, require each resident to call in and make an appointment and list whatever items uh, uh, they want picked up. And what I'm told, too, is they're working on a system uh, that's going to put in addresses for all of the condominiums and so that if, let's say, you live in Discovery Bay, and so they are going to put in the address for Discovery Bay, and they know that Discovery Bay's got almost 600 units, so the, you know, the, the, the program will have all of the apartment buildings in it. And so once you uh, find your condominium and you type in your unit number, all you have to do then is to add the items that you want picked up. 
and and hope and uh, and and I'm not an IT person, but apparently this is something that the city is uh, working on, and hopefully um, uh, they can um, uh, implement it. But you know, it's going to start on Monday, and um, and I've been hearing things about there. People are are thinking that this is going to be a mess, but anyway. Um, it is going to start on Monday, and it's going to be for, from, for people who live in Foster Village, in Aea, all the way up to Hawaii Kai. And if you don't live in that area, then bulky item pickup is going to be just like it is right now. You don't call it in, and if your pickup day is the last Wednesday of the month, it's still going to be the last Wednesday of the month. And, and, and at the hearing, there were all kinds of concerns raised about, you know, we, we, if you put stuff out on the sidewalk, if, if you put stuff on the sidewalk, other people see it and they will come and put their stuff on it. And, and then that means that this, uh, the, when the city comes to pick up your stuff, there's more items there than were called in. And so what happens? And if that happens, what you need to do is call the Environmental Services Department. And like I said before, they, have, they told us they have investigators. And you want to call in and complain and let them know that people in the neighborhood or people who are driving by are just dropping stuff there. Because they, the, the way the ordinance is set up, if it's your sidewalk in front of your property and, uh, and you're in violation of, uh, of the uh, bulky item pickup rules and regulations, your association is going to get fined. And in order to avoid those fines, then, you know, you need to make sure that you're uh, uh, notifying the Department of Environmental Services whenever there's a violation. And uh, we kind of think that, you know, this is something that every, we're going to have to watch. And we would be very surprised if everything runs smoothly. And so, yes, this is a work in progress. And we're going to be watching it. And if those of you, you know, who experience any I issues with this pilot project or with, uh, with, with the pilot project, you know, why don't you give us a call and share that information? Because we will then, you know, uh, forward it on to the city uh, because it's, it may affect what they're going to do uh, uh, with Bill 13 and the pilot project for bulky item pickups. And so next week, please join us next week. For, um, uh, we're uh, we're going to have Hawaiian Electric, and they're going to be talking about energy efficient programs. And Richard Emery will be here. And so it'll be a very informative program, and it's going to save you money. So please join us next week for the energy efficient in, uh, 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 products. Okay? Thank you and mahalo.